Good morning and welcome to another edition of Virtual Worship at Grace and Peace Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Mary. I am joined by our organist, Richard Pop, and by my husband, Pastor Nathan Johnson, who serves St. John's Lutheran Church in Toluca, Illinois. We are here in the sanctuary of Grace and Peace, and I hope that wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, you are well. This morning, we will be worshiping together using two hymns out of the Red ELW hymnal. The first one that we will be beginning with in just a moment is Softly and Tenderly Jesus is Calling. That is number 608. And I invite you to join now wherever you are in singing along or listening along as together we begin worship with our gathering hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, 
I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as they commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then God said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Oh, I think I hear someone. I think I might hear my friend Minerva the Wisdom Owl. Oh, Minerva, come on over here. Do you might have something to say to us this morning? Ooh, ooh. Good morning, Pastor Nathan. Oh, good morning, Minerva. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, Pastor? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, Minerva. I'm feeling a little bummed out this morning. Ooh, why is that, Pastor Nathan? Well, we had a lot of great plans coming up here at Grace and Peace and at other churches. We had plans for Palm Sunday and for Holy Week and for Easter. All sorts of fun and exciting things that we were going to do together. But because it's not really safe and healthy for people to get together right now, a lot of my plans are changing, and that just leaves me feeling sort of sad. Ooh, ooh, that is very disappointing, Pastor Nathan. I'm so sorry. But you know, Pastor Nathan, just because things aren't going the way we planned them doesn't mean that we can't have hope. Oh, really? Tell me about hope, Minerva. I need to hear about that right now. Well, hope is when we can imagine that things will be better than they are now. Hope is something that God gives us so that we might be able to trust that things will get better. Oh, man, Minerva, that is a good word to hear right now. I needed that uh, hope in my life. Thanks for sharing that with me. You really are a wise owl. Well, Pastor Nathan, God always gives us hope, and even though things might be disappointing right now, even though the plans we made might have to happen later than we had planned for them to take place, God is still with us, and God will still bring us into new life together. Well, that's a wonderful reminder, Minerva. Thank you. Is there anything that we can do together to feel that hope right now? Well... We can always pray, Pastor Nathan. Just another wise idea, Minerva. Let's pray together. All right. Well, you repeat after me, Pastor Nathan. Okay, I'm ready. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for filling us with hope. Thank you for filling us with hope. Thank you for teaching us to imagine that things will get better. Thank you for teaching us to imagine that things will get better. Please be with us as we wait for you to bring us new life. Please be with us as we wait for you to bring us new life. Amen. Amen. I hope you feel better, Pastor Nathan. I feel better already, Minerva. Thank you. You You're welcome. All right. Let's take off. Well, grace to you and peace from the God who brings us from death to life. 
I've been thinking these last few days back to Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season whose end we are now nearing. When I preached this last Ash Wednesday, I spent a lot of time dwelling on the fact that one day we will all die. I thought it was important to drag people through the reality of our mortality a little bit so that when we arrived at Easter some 40 days later and finally got to hear about new life, we'd really appreciate it. It would have been awfully nice if somebody would have said, hey Mary, this Lent is going to include a global pandemic, so maybe lay off the whole death thing because by the time this is over, we will get the picture. Today's scripture reading started with graves. The prophet Ezekiel is brought out by the hand of God to the middle of a valley of dry bones. Bones, God tells Ezekiel, of the whole house of Israel. Skeletons that cry out, our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. And so we begin, as we did mere weeks ago on Ash Wednesday, by dwelling in the reality of death. But the first piece of good news from this passage is that even as we are surrounded by death, God is with us. And this is always a powerful word for we who follow Jesus to know that God comes to us in valleys littered with the remains of our hopes, that God stands with us at the tomb and weeps alongside us. It would be enough to know that God never abandons us and that God finds us in the darkest and scariest places and that God is here with us, here in the sanctuary of grace and peace and by your side, wherever and whenever you are hearing this. As we know all too well from these weeks of social distancing, there is grace to be found in the simple presence of another and it would be enough to rest in the presence of God that is here and now. But that is not where the power of God ends. Together, God and Ezekiel wander the valley of dry bones. And as they wander, God invites Ezekiel to wonder, can these bones live? And the prophet answers, O Lord God, you know. With only the grisly evidence of destruction and human demise at his feet, Ezekiel looks to his God, able to imagine that God's power might bring about other possibilities. That's how it is for us sometimes as people of faith. Heartbreak and trust coexist within our souls. We are not strangers to disappointment, to confusion, to longing. But sometimes it is from this very place of desperation, of shared sorrow and concern, that we are able to bear witness to what God is doing. Indeed, God calls Ezekiel to do more than just watch. Ezekiel is invited to participate in the restoration of life. Prophesy to the bones, God tells Ezekiel. Say to them, hear the word of the Lord. You will live. And Ezekiel speaks to the bones, speaks the same creative words that God has given him to say, and there is a great rattling. And the bones come together, and sinews and flesh cover them, and then the breath of God enters them. And then God speaks to the nation of Israel another word of promise. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from death, God says. I will put my spirit within you and you will live. I imagine that for many of us, the imagery of the grave rings uncomfortably true right now. Even for those of us who make the best of this time, it's hard to escape the news of disaster and dread. Some of us are sick. Some of us have died. Some of us are out of work. Dire supply shortages curtail what healing we might have the power to administer. And we are sequestered from each other, unable to lean on the support of community. We miss our old lives, our friends, our churches, our co-workers. We watch with sinking hearts as our economies sputter and our systems groan under unfamiliar strains. 
We lament the certainty that has slipped away, and we have begun to name with deep regret the things we could have done differently. It would seem that we have entered a valley and that it is already strewn with the bones of canceled joys and vanished opportunities. Is our hope lost? Have we been cut off completely? Can these bones live? O oh Lord God, you know. This moment, this bone-filled valley cries out for us to bear witness to new life that God is already creating. We are people of faith, and even as our hearts break, God invites us to trust, to participate in restoration, to prophesy to the whole resurrected people of God. I will bring you up from your graves, God promises us. And then God goes and does it. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Ours is a God of resurrection. Ours is a God who does not flee from anguish, who does not forsake the afflicted. Our lowest places are the holy habitation of the Most High, and there is no grave that God will not open, no grave from which God will not bring us up. This moment of desolation will not have the final say for us, because God has spoken and God will act. Cradled and called by the love of our Creator, we are filled with God's Spirit so that we may live. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite you to listen and to contemplate as our organist Richard Pop offers another offering. Thank you, Richard. At this time, I would like you to, I would like to invite you to join with me as together we pray the, pray the prayers of intercession and learn to speak, apparently. Wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, I invite you to join in after every petition. I will say, hear us, O God, and I invite you to respond, your mercy is great. Let us pray. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enliven the church with your spirit and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, you love the world you have made and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, or other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation, those longing for wars to cease, those waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize, those who care for the gravely ill, and those in need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, we give thanks for opportunities for this community to collaborate with their wider community in caring for the needs of our neighbors. Fill our hearts with generosity to sustain our communities and our neighbors in this time of need. Strengthen our ties with other local congregations, agencies, and services. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle and keep us faithful in prayer. We lift up to you all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, whom we name aloud now, aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, I invite you to join now as gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will will be done. done on earth as as it is is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join with us as we sing our sending hymn, him today is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. If you are following along in a red ELW hymnal, you can find this uh, as number 335. We will sing the first and the fourth verse. Keep me near the cross, there's a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's 
And now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us.